Okay, I finally made it to the Dick Blick store in Tampa. Oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at all these wash colors. This is the whole vein. Uh. Incredible. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm going to check out these matte acrylics by Blick, too. Oh, wish you were all here with me. Hello, I think you guys saw my story that I went to Blick's uh, art supply store in Tampa today. So let me show you what I got. Some odds and ends. We'll play with it. We'll play with this stuff too. Right there. Okay. I held myself back because I forgot to write down the colors I already have of the whole vein gouache. And this is something I'm trying to get better at because then I end up buying colors I already had and you know the stuff isn't cheap so okay I got um, I love this the moleskin this is the one I've almost filled up um, the watercolor art journal and it's a nice thick watercolor paper that I gesso or in some cases on and then paint or like these I didn't gesso those are old but I've had this forever and it's filling up so I went ahead and got a new one well, when I'm done with this one. So that's that. And it's it's the it's shaped like this and it's the watercolor album. Yeah. So then uh, this is just a great paper for, you know, when I'm teaching and I want to just use a scrap paper like I'm going to today right now to show you these paints and look at them. It's really inexpensive, and since I'm, you know, when I'm, as long as it's the right thickness, which is 140 pounds, not thinner, I don't like working with thinner papers, then since I'm just sewing it, I don't need, like, the amazing watercolor properties, although I like Hanson. I, I, it's a mid-grade, this one, but it, I think it does a great job, and I'll be just sewing these anyway and doing, you know, this kind of painting on them probably so I don't need um like it would be a waste to get say an arches watercolor paper because I'm just gessoing over it okay so that's that then I t I've heard about these fluid this fluid watercolor paper um so I got a tablet to try it has a very nice texture very similar to the cans and maybe a little bit more like a an arches and this is a nice size I've played with this so I just picked that up too oops oh, sorry hit the arm I you guys know that I love my oil pastels and these are the mungyo that I have a link to on my website they come with all these colors but I thought I'd pick up just I'm always trying different brands and see pick up a couple colors in these um, a couple colors I know I love that I didn't think I quite had or I was using up my turquoise in the um, in the Mungyo and this is the Neo Pastel brand same brand as my as my Neo color so Cron Dash I think it's Swiss yes Cron Dash makes these Neo color crayon, Neo color ones and twos. I think they make pencils. So I thought I'd try those. So we'll see what those, how creamy those are. And then, I what's in here. Oh, I know. Yeah, this would be fun to play with. 
some of you have probably seen these. They're the Verwent Ink Tense pencil, and they're made in England. Shout out to all you UKers. And the, what it is, is it's basically ink and a pencil. So it, you, you um, put it on there with a little bit of water, so we'll try it, and then they say it's permanent. And I don't think I've had any of these. I have just about every other pencil type, because I like to try things, right? So I have the Stabilos, I have the Neo Color, or the Super Colors, but all of these are water soluble and they can be reactivated with water. The ink tents, once they dry, they're permanent. So we'll do that first and see if it dries while we're talking. Um, actually, let me do that now and then we can talk about the rest of these things. That way we'll be able to see, do a test on it drying. I'll just do like a, oh, maybe I'll just do like, you know, a leaf stem and then we'll wet it and see what happens. So supposedly it's going to be permanent once it dries. It's more of an ink pencil than a watercolor pencil. I would probably use it to make some, maybe some backgrounds, you know, because it's nice when your backgrounds are permanent and they don't get reactivated with whatever you put on top. So let's try another color um, and just say, You know, you could have a texture like that in the background or something. The colors were not, like, I, I couldn't find, you know, like a good turquoise, which is kind of interesting. Let's see if it blends. I'll have to play with how to get the most out of this idea that they're permanent. If you have ideas or you've used them, let me know. How that It brightens up a lot when it's wet. I see that now. So it may be that some of the colors I was looking at, like the turquoise, just look a lot brighter when they're wet. I don't know. Play with that. That could make an interesting background though, you know, if you had that on a whole page. And I also got indigo because you know that I love indigo is probably my favorite dark. All right, we'll let that dry while I show you the rest of this stuff. Uh, so yeah, this, let's try these oil pastels. This is the Jade. Oh, that is nice and creamy. Yum, that just sits on top there. I'll definitely be using that. And I got this lemon yellow. Yeah, these are nice. Let's see how they compare to the Mungyo. So, I mean, the Mungyo are really nice, so I don't know. Yeah, sits on there too, nice and chunky. Very similar. And I think they were like two sixty a piece, so kind of pricey. Um, I mean, the the Mungyo set. I can't remember. I think it's forty. Was it forty eight colors for? Yeah, they come out to like a dollar a piece. But you know, I just thought I'd try. See how they feel. So I would say that the Grand Dash feels more creamy. Maybe maybe it's more easily spread. Yeah, I, I would say so. It feels like it would spread more easily. So I'll put these little guys in here. They'll be that way. They'll have friends. And I picked up two new colors. At least I hope they're new because I didn't have my list of whole bang gouache. Or 
Well, I don't have a list, but I think what I'm going to do is take a picture so I don't buy doubles. But I didn't, I really didn't think I had these colors. And of course, you don't need to buy shell pink. You can just mix it with pink and white. But I was there and I thought it'd be fun to pick up a couple new colors. So let's see what that shell pink is like. Every time I've gotten a whole vein color, it's been gorgeous. So that's really pretty. Yeah, I'll be using that. I make that color all the time, so, you know, or something similar, so it'll be nice to have it. And then this is vermilion, which I just, I basically picked a couple of colors that I knew I didn't have. It's a really bright, warm, red, orange. It'll be good for mixing with things. Yeah, it's just a really nice paint. Gosh, it's pricey though. I think these were $9.50 a piece. That's why I go with the Turner. All right, then I picked up, because I ruined my last one by drawing in oil pastels, my Micron navy blue. Not many stores have the navy blue, and I know you can, <laughs> it doesn't look much different than black to, to anybody else, but I love it, so. Um, this time I'll try not to write in oil pastel with it. And then let's turn the page because I picked up some of these colors of this. Um, you know how much I like matte paint, not glossy paint. And I had seen these, um, I think online, their own brand of matte acrylic. The top of the line that I have found of matte acrylic is the Golden Soul Flat, which I have packed away because we are leaving to go to Michigan for the month of July, but so I don't have it here. But that has been, you know, that is, it, it's pricey and it's very, very good. So I just wanted to see what I thought of the pigmentation on this one. I'm definitely making a mess. I should get my I'm gonna get my sketchbook out. This is what we do with with paint. This is how I start a background in a sketchbook. I just wait. I've done this before when I open new paints. That way you don't waste paint. And it gets you an interesting background. So let's open you up. I mean, there's a background from before. And let's, let's uh, run, run. This one has gesso on it. I can put it here. All right, that one's done. Well, yeah, I'll do it here so we can see, because I want to see how matte this is. So we'll have to let it dry a little bit. And I'll open the rest of these. So I got, what is this, aqua. I got orange light. Seems like I'm kind of going through a pale pink phase. And brilliant magenta. What I, when I'm trying out uh, a new paint, what I've realized is um, get a white in it because, you know, you're going to be able to see how that, I use more white than anything. And get the three modern, what some people call modern primary colors. You know, we were taught, I talk about this in my new color success class, um, color mixing success. We were, we were taught uh, that the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow, and that all other colors come from there. Well, it's not true. 
um, try to make a magenta out of those and it'll it's just an exercise in frustration or try to make it turquoise and if you have the right yellow lemony yellow and the right blue like a cerulean blue yes you can get a turquoise but you can make a lot more colors by getting the three primaries when you buy which are magenta turquoise and a yellow now this yellow is it's kind of strange it's a uh, it's very muted. It almost seems like it has some burnt umber in it. And look at that, it is matte though. And it does have a good pigment intensity. Interesting. Now the, the magenta is pretty translucent compared to the turquoise and the orange light. Usually paints will have something on there about how translucent they are, but this is a very like student grade. But like, for example, They'll usually have, see this little square? That's a that's all filled in. That means that's an opaque paint. Let me find you another one. This is the gold. See how it's half filled in? That means it's not as opaque, but it's not also completely trans, let's see, I probably don't have one that's completely transparent. Yeah, they're either, this is the Liquitex acrylic gouache brand, and they have that there too, but I, I have enough of it and it's good. I, I don't know, I, for some reason I don't love it, but that could just be that I have not played with it enough. But these were, I wanna say like 260 a piece. And look at this nice opaque color. So definitely an option if you um, have access to Dick Blick or can go online. Uh, that is definitely drying matte. See that? So I'll have to play with those. But since I bought the three primaries, I can, in white, I can get quite a few colors. I should have gotten a dark too, but you know, I, I didn't know if it would be a good paint. Um, but I think for, certainly for the bottom layers of an abstract, it'd be just fine. All right, so this is dried. Oops, let me put that in the water. This is dried, I think, yeah. So let's see if it is permanent. Well, maybe I didn't let it dry all the way because that yellow came up. Hmm. <laughs> it's not acting too permanent, is it? definitely reconstitu reconstituting with water. So either I didn't let it dry enough. Hmm. I mean, I did have to scrub it. It's definitely not as water soluble as some of the others. It probably needs more time to dry. Stay tuned on the ink tents. So that was my shopping trip. It was fun. And, um, I saw a few other things that that uh, I would I would love to try. They had ink tents um, sets of paint, so like basically ink paint, which I thought might be fun to try. But these were about two sixty a piece if you got six of them. But then they give me a teacher discount. I don't think it's much, but anyway, it was a fun trip. I think it'll be interesting to see how this white one performs not here but say like on something like this I don't know sometimes I like to get a white it's not doing much is it definitely have to do more research